Hello, welcome to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Welcome to another match reaction. It's finished Luton Town 1, Watford nil at Kenilworth Road. Uh, Derby day ends in disappointment for Watford as a James Collins penalty was the difference between the two sides today. Um, but, you know, overall, Watford weren't good enough. They were not good enough today. Really disappointing display from Watford. Um, not at the races, just was slow, sloppy in possession. The tempo wasn't right. I thought our application wasn't there. And I think we just kind of fell into the Luton trap today, which was particularly disappointing because I think there were signs at the Middlesbrough game away where Middlesbrough had a game plan and we fell into that. And I think Luton had a game plan today and we fell into that again. And those two displays do concern me a little bit because, you know, tactically we weren't there. The application wasn't there. The intensity was the big thing for me today. You know, we had eight days between our last game against Reading on, on Friday night to today. Not only is it a derby day, not only do we have to be on it for minute one, but we had enough time to recover from that, that Friday game and the intensity levels were below par, way below par, which is particularly disappointing. Um, I just think we weren't at it. We weren't at the races. Um, we didn't deserve to win. We should have been down at half time. We couldn't really get into the Luton, Luton half at, at any point, really. Um, Saar had a couple of times on the right, but Zhao was isolated through the middle. Ken didn't offer a lot down the left. Um, I thought the game was screaming out for, for a Tom Cleverley or a Dan Gosling in there, and I would have started one of them from the beginning. Uh, Cisco Moon was opted for Carlos Sanchez in that holding role and pushed Husey a little bit further forward. But I think what we've learned over the past, you know, the, so well, since the, the commentary game really, is that Husey is so effective in that number six role in the midfield three. And I think this is nothing against Carlos Sanchez. I actually thought what he did, he did well. You know, he made a brilliant tackle in the first half, which was a little bit risky, but in the penalty area, uh, executed it perfectly. But that isn't Carlos Sanchez's game, I think, today. Um, you know, what he did, he did well, but we needed someone in there with more energy, with more intensity. Drop Husey back, bring in Gosling or Cleverley. I don't know whether uh, Cleverley was fit to, to play from the start, but it felt like a game for one of the, those two guys to, to play from the start. And we really did lack that in the midfield again today. Um, you know, I thought Zinkanar would struggle to get into the game again. It felt like that challenge in the first half really did set him back. You know, the back four, I mean, the, the big disappointment today is, is Kiko's red card. I mean, you know, a Derby Day defeat away from home at this point in the season is disappointing enough. But to have your, well, one of your players of the seasons out for, for Norwich away, which again is a, a massive game, and particularly with them getting promoted, is so frustrating, avoidable, disappointing. I think Kiko's reaction when he came off said it all the way, he kind of threw his kit off, kicked the bench. He knows how silly that was um, and it was just a really needless yellow card that could have been so avoidable uh, from Kika Femini and that's going to be a big blow and, you know, touching on the fullbacks today, um, as we, we we found out in the warm-up that Adam Messina had, had pulled out due to sickness at Kraft Lazar, made his first start for the Hornets and, yeah, it's it's one that we're all going to forget, really. Um, you know, it was a it was a really really poor display from from Lazar, and I I have to admit I do feel a little bit sorry for him in the sense that he did get chucked in the deep ends at, in the last minute, but not good enough, not good enough from Akraf Lazar. And we can talk through that goal. It's so sloppy. I mean, again, so sloppy on the ball. Um, Lazar was just, I mean, the pass is woeful. And then Dan Backman had to come out. He mistimed it. Uh, I actually thought Batman's overall game was, was really good apart from that moment, which is really frustrating because people will remember that moment. But I actually thought he was comfortable on the ball. Um, he made some good saves, commanded his area well. But that mistake is a stonewall penalty. Um, and then it's 50-50, isn't it? And we've seen with Dan Batman how good his penalty saves have been. And, you know, it's one of those. But, I mean, at, going back onto Akraf Lazar, I, I don't think we can play him again this season. He looked way out of his depth. Um, not good enough to play for, for what football club at this point in the season, at this point in what we're striving for. Um, yeah, and, and it does beg the question, where is Jeremy and Gakia in all of this? Because as we saw earlier on the season under Vladimir Ivic, Kiko would push the left back and Jeremy would play at right back. And I think that's certainly a better alternative than, than playing at Kref Lazar at left back. Um, even Ben Wilmot in there. And, you know, looking ahead to, to Tuesday's game against Norwich, I'd certainly consider going to a back three and playing maybe Ken as, as a left wing back. Um, the proposition of Mark Navarro and Akraf Lazar as our two fullbacks in a back four against a Norwich team who have been incredibly good this season really does worry me. And if I was Cisco Munoz, I'd certainly look to avoid that. You know, both players haven't played a lot this season. I don't think both players are up to speed, as we saw with Lazar today. 
Um, and I don't think both players are really good enough at this stage in the season for Watford. And I think we've got to be brutally honest about it. That 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 is the situation. Um, so that's something I definitely consider going to Norwich on Tuesday night. In terms of the overall Watford performance, though, as I said, not good enough. Not, not good enough. Um, and the biggest concern for me is we didn't even have a shot on target. Now, of course, Andre Gray's goal was ruled out at the end. And initially, I didn't think it was offside. But as John Marks and Tommy Mooney said in commentary, the Watford analysts had, had confirmed that he was just slightly offside, which, you know, I did actually celebrate it as if we had scored an equaliser. And when I saw the flag up, I thought, right, this isn't going to be our day, is it? Um, but we didn't turn up. We've got to be brutally honest with it. Cisco Moonoff has to be honest with it. The players have to be honest with it. And what I hope from this game is, and, you know, it's going to hurt as Watford fans, you know, of course, we knew how much this game means, not only for the supporters, but for the, the club as a, as a whole. And particularly for the team at this point in the season, it's, it's, a, it's a bitter blow for us. But the positives that we can take away from it is that Brentford and Swansea both dropped points today. Swansea is six points behind us with a, a significantly worse goal difference. Um, and Brentford have a game in hand to play, but they'll still be behind us. And the situation still is in our hands. That is the main thing. With four games left for this championship season, Watford are still up there. They're still in second. The situation is in our hands. Yesterday is going to hurt. It's how we react from today. Because as we saw in the Bournemouth game, this Watford team does have a lot of character. We went on a really good run after that that Bournemouth well, that difficult Bournemouth game to watch as a supporter with all the uh, shenanigans going on with Jefferson Lerma, etc. There was a it really did boil over that, that 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 day, and I'm hoping that this can be the catalyst for us to really put in a big shift for the last four games. And, it, and we have to see a, a change from today's performance. It wasn't good enough. We have to accept that. We've got to take responsibility for our own mistakes collectively as a team. We have to take responsibility because we were way below par today, um, and that that. This has to be a catalyst for, for, the, for the last four games of the season. We've got to play Norwich, Brentford and Swansea and Millwall at home. So four difficult games for different reasons, but to play three of the top four is incredibly difficult, but can also work into our hands if we do turn up and we do play our best stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not all doom and gloom for Watford. Yesterday will hurt. Yes, we've got to... We've, We've got to kind of put this at the back of our minds. We've got to forget about it, but we've got to use this and really spur us on for the last four games of the season. Because as I said, the situation is in our hands. Cisco Munoz will know that. The players will know that. I think today was the first time since the commentary game where I really, well, actually the first time since we've kind of been right up there in the promotion spots that I felt the occasion got the better of us. Um, I felt that we were not at the levels that we we can we can produce. And as we said in the preview, you know, if we did turn up today, we would win. We didn't turn up, and ultimately, Luton deserved the win. So we've just got to we've got to take that we've got to take that and go again. And Tuesday night against Norwich is a is a massive game for the football club. Norwich have just been promoted. Obviously, results going their way today. Um, whether they're going to be on the beach or not, I'm not too sure. And they can secure the title actually on Tuesday night. So big game, big period for Watford. We need to keep our heads up. We need to go again. Um, we've had that phrase a lot this season, but we need to see the character of this Watford side. And I'm sure we have got the character to, to really get back to winning ways and, and produce the performance levels that we know this Watford team can do. So there we go. Disappointing day, disappointing derby day. Um, well, we won the first one. They won the second one. Yeah, <laughs> disappointing. I'm, I'm hurting today, as I'm sure all of you Watford fans are as well. But we've got to go again. It's Tuesday night against Norwich. Four games left for this championship season. The the promotion situation is still in our hands. We've got to turn up. We've got to do the business and we've got to improve our performances. But that's where I'm going to wrap up today. Thank you very much to everyone who watched. Please do leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Um, well, I'm, I don't think you'd enjoy uh, me talking about a defeat, but yeah, I appreciate it anyway. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts. And we'll see you very soon. Come on, you on it.